what is going on traders in this video i quickly wanted to talk about a question that got asked by one of the elite members in the discord group and the question stated how to choose the right of expert to trade depending on the market conditions i was thinking about that when i saw you traded au when eu and gu were very rangy now there was a question by daniel he has been an elite member since the very beginning of the elite program and i think he's making great progress so thank you so much for the question daniel and actually let's get into the nitty and gritty of the answer here so indeed i trade multiple pairs but it doesn't mean that if i take trades on one day that it will be on all of those pairs definitely not i trade multiple pairs and i have a specific order and this order has been established by knowing my data right so i know for example that on eu i have the most chance of trades playing out followed by gu and then followed by au and after that i will be looking at gold and us 30 in that specific order and I basically, if I do not like the market conditions, EU or GU, for example, only then would I be looking at AU or gold. I mainly tend to look at about two pairs just to get the chance of an entry each single day. And I also have multiple models. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I think I will be able to answer this question, which is probably a question that a lot of you guys basically have. So how do I know when I have to trade which pair? And I will quickly be covering all of these reasons why I would be looking at different pairs, why I would not be touching a single pair and so forth. So the first thing is going to be overall bad market conditions and overall bad market conditions. How do they look? Let me quickly go to a day with a great example. So here, for example, if we look at the Asian session, there are a lot of people who actually trade the Asian session. What do we see here? Price doesn't really have a clear direction. It's just chopping around. If I see price action like this, I know that I will likely get burned because people who take shorts here will get burned and people who take longs here will get burned. So that's the first clear distinction that I make is the price action. Does it have a clear direction? Does it have clean movement? And does it respect highs or lows? Which in this case, it really doesn't. It doesn't respect any high and it doesn't respect any low. So trading within this range is basically going to get you burned, which I do not like. And a great example here, uh, for example, is the Thursday here. I would say that the start of the London session was pretty bad. If I notice price action like this, I would likely wait for the market to show us a clear direction, which it started doing over here. As we can see, we had this big range right here, basically sweeping highs and sweeping lows before we then actually started respecting, as you can see, we actually started respecting these lows and started to show some clean movement. Now, these are market conditions that I can trade. So in this case, I would be looking for trades. Now, the second bit is going to be consolidation. And that's basically what, what was happening here, right? So price isn't really moving. It's kind of the same as the first example that I highlighted, but this is more that there is not much that you can target. So price is moving within a really small range. I was looking for a quick example here and I think I found one. So here, for example, let's say you wanted to trade New York, which started here and you notice that the price action was looking like this. So now it's not really choppy, but it's just really rangy. So this means that as soon as New York opened from 7 a.m., I would likely not be touching the market until I really see some decent movement, which only started at around 8.30. Of course, this is gold, so this might not be the best example because in indices we do see that the price only starts moving decently around 8 30 but you get the idea if price is doing this if price is really on its butts and it's not really moving it's just consolidating consolidating one place in that case i don't really tend to touch the pair and i tend to go to the next one now the third example and there was a really great um, example on the same day here is when we have a falling knife or that's something i like to call it. a falling knife what is that to me when the market is really aggressively ranging down. In this case, I might just not be catching trades because you have multiple options of trading here, right? So we have, we'll have people that try to catch reversals. So they see some kind of pattern. In our case on my channel, it's mostly ICT traders. So what they might see is they might see a market structure shift somewhere. They might take an entry and then get burned because the market is trending so heavily. Let me give you a quick example for that. So right here, what do we see? The market really starts selling off quite strongly. And then right here, what do we notice? We have a market structure shift. So this high right here basically broke the lowest leg of liquidity or the latest leg of liquidity better. So here we have our sweep. We then have our market structure shift. And then we would be looking for an entry around the equilibrium or discount off of an FEG. 
Now, if we would have taken this trade, we would have been burned because the market just continues lower, inevitably taking out that low right here. So the reversal basically failed here. And then an, another option would be to actually take continuation trades. So let's say you see this move going down, right? it's moving down quite nicely. Then you notice, okay, we pull back and you were trying to catch a trade off of this FEG. So let's say you try to catch a trade around the equilibrium, which I mark with my FIP tool. So right here is the equilibrium. You try to catch a trade around there short to catch the continuation towards some higher time frame liquidity. Okay, so you miss it. What do we see here? We have another fair value gap form and you decide to actually take a short off of that. You short the FEG, you cover this high. Um, let's say you target something like four or five R. What do we see? You could have of course taken partials in this example, but what do we see? The market basically taps you out. And the reason for that is because in this case, you were, you are basically selling in a discounted area, which is not good. If you were to be looking for sales, I would like to look over here, not at the low of the range. So usually when the market is a falling knife, I'm not trying to catch any reversal trades. And I'm also not trying to catch continuation trades because I know that likely I will get burned on these or I will likely not have a winning rate that is higher than 50%, which I do not really like in general. And then the last but not least thing, I think it's actually the most important one. So if you stuck around for this, this is where the true value is gonna be come, coming from. And that is if there is no clear intent in the market. Now, what do I mean by that? I mainly trade by draws on liquidity. So I always have a daily bias in mind. I either have this daily bias by looking at the daily chart or I have a daily bias by looking at the hourly chart. So right here, let's actually look for an opportunity where we would have had a really clear bias. All right, so what happens here, price starts moving lower, we sweep liquidity, we see a really strong candle just closing below a low here. Then we see that price pushed lower, we have a really strong rejection with a big wick here, zoom in a bit further for those mobile viewers. So we see this strong candle, then this really strong rejection. So what is likely going to be happening, our draw on liquidity is likely going to be somewhere over here, right? So this is what would be my draw on liquidity. So at this point, we have a really clean target in mind. So our first target, our low hanging fruit would be that draw on liquidity. We could then go to the lower time frames and look for an entry either in our discounted zone or wait for some other confluences to stack to actually target that. So let's see what happens in this case. We of course saw it already. We push on up, we really smash that target. Now, if we take a look at this, what do we see? We are tapping into this fair value gap right here. So now we could see two things happen. We either reverse off of that and rebalance some of this imbalance, or we just look at the lower time frame. We see that we are deciding to really push through that FEG and then our draw liquidity would be this bit of liquidity right here. So that could be something that we're targeting. And if I see a really strong move like that, I really doubt that imbalance is really going to do that it's going to hold. So I would be looking for longs right here. On the lower time frame, of course, I would look for a long entry targeting that draw on liquidity there. So as you can see, the fair value gap didn't really hold. So I am still very bullish. So what we could be doing is looking at this big, big imbalance that we have here. We could wait for a tap into that and then target the draw on liquidity, for example. And there we go. Inevitably, we take out that liquidity that we marked up and we could bank some profits if we would have taken a trade. Now, some market conditions where the market is not clear. Now, this, this is a pretty clear example. So we established that our draw on liquidity was this high, which we actually took out with this candle. Now we started to move down. We were showing some bearish intent with this candle right here. And I just skipped ahead to the London session. So this is 2 a.m. What do we see now? So we know that we swept this liquidity. So a lot of you, a lot of ICT traders, what they start to do immediately is start to look for shorts. So they see this, they start to look for shorts because we just swept liquidity. And what is the next logical target? It's going to be the imbalance. Okay, that's a way. But is the market really showing that it wants to move lower? In this case, it doesn't. Now, price is actually making higher highs. Does this mean that we can start taking longs? No, because we have two things actually talking against each other. So first off, we have this big imbalance right here where we know that price is likely going to magnetize towards, but we also have more liquidity resting up here, right? So we have buy side liquidity in this case, we have a fair value gap down here. And to add to that, we also have sell side liquidity right here. 
So can, can we be sure the price is heading for one of these levels? Right now we cannot. So at this point, I would either sit on my hands or I would look for another pair to trade. All right, so I just skipped price ahead a little bit and we noticed that we actually took out the sell side liquidity. And what I wanted to make you guys aware of is that right here, actually a new trading day opened. So we had the London session open here again. And what do we see? We see that price is going below that sell side again, while we actually already swept that sell side on the previous day. So this right here is an indication that the liquidity that was resting below this sell side was likely not significant enough to push or to fuel a push upwards towards that buy side liquidity. So what could likely happen now, and I'm not saying we have to look for shorts yet, now we need to have a clear intent from the market that the market actually wants to go ahead and push lower. All right, so what do we see here? This is still the London session. We just took out this high right here. So we have this sweep. And now the market really displaces below that liquidity that we had there, which is indicating that price wants to likely rebalance or what could it also do? It could be wanting to go for more sell side liquidity. So in this case, what could we, for example, do for a trade ID? We could mark out the 50% level of this imbalance. So let's mark that up. We have this and to me, this would now be the draw on liquidity. Why? Because the market is clearly showing that it wants to go lower. We have this big imbalance down here. We have an additional confluence, which is the sell side liquidity. And if we zoom out a little, what can we see? We are quite bearish on the higher time frames as well. So right now, what is more likely to happen? We moved upwards towards that buy side liquidity. We failed to take out the buy side liquidity. So we started to reverse. We took out liquidity, had a small reaction to it, but it was not strong enough to fuel a move up again. We now see really strong displacement to the downside. So right here, we could assume that this high is going to be respected and that our draw on liquidity, our first low hanging fruit target is going to be 50% of that FEG. If we want to risk some more, we could smack on a trade that looks like this. And of course, I would go to the lower time frames to refine this, but let's say we take a trade off of this right here. What you could do is target the external sell side liquidity. You could then take partials at your first drawn liquidity level. You could then take another partial right here and then your final take profit near the sell side liquidity, for example. So of course I would refine it on the one minute, but let's see what happens here. The market starts moving into our favor. And if you want to know why we had this drawdown, as you can see, we had, and let me quickly remove the clutter here. We had this fair value gap left right here that we tapped into. And this is a perfect moment for me to actually take trades. This is where I would be looking for shorts. I would refine it. Let me actually go into that example for you in just a second. And let's see what the market does. Inevitably, it actually takes out that sell side liquidity that I marked up. So let's go to the one minute here and let's see how I would have taken that trade. And this is some, some sauce for you guys. This is something that a lot of people are not giving away for free. I'm giving this away for absolutely free. I would appreciate some love in the comments here. Okay, so what do we see? We rush through that one hour bit off. And let me quickly remove the whole trade here. So this right here, as we know, is the one hour FEG that we just tapped into. One could argue that this would be a sufficient tap, but we do not really see a strong market structure shift here. So we do not really shift below this level. So no trades for me there. Now, what do we see? A really strong push up, push down, push up again, sweeping that liquidity. So this is our model, right? If we look at the ICT 2022 mentorship model, this is the model. And then we would be looking at an entry off of the fair value gap and then a continuation trade. So in this case, what do we see? We have our sweep. We do have our market structure shift and it only happens on this candle for me, followed by some strong displacement to the downside. We could then start using the FIP tool. And if we pull the FIP tool to around these lows where we displace to, this is our 50% area. So we start looking around the 50% area. Where do we have an FEG? We could possibly move to the two minute time frame to spot a bigger one around equilibrium. What do we see? We actually already mitigated that FEG. So what we could do is use that leg that actually mitigated into that FEG and try to catch a trade in there. What do we see here? We have this fair value gap. We actually tap into that. So we could take a short off of this fair value gap. We could cover this high. And as for a target, that could be the draw on liquidity, or we just target the first low hanging fruit, which would be right here. This to me is clear liquidity from just before the London session. And that could be our trade.
So this could be a ADR trade or if you like to play it safe, you like to cover those highs, which I honestly usually do. In that case, you would have got 3.66R or you could have gone for the draw on liquidity, which we marked out, right? In that case, you could have either had a 5.7R trade or when covering this high. And why do we cover this high? Because this high mitigated the last bit of imbalance that was here. So if price were to return here, we would likely no longer be interested in the position. Or you could have caught 13.28R. So that is also a really clean trade. And if you wanted to go extreme, I do not have the guts to do this. Some people do, and by all means, go for it. You could target that sell side liquidity on the downside. You could go for a 32.7R trade, which as we know, inevitably, also works out as you can see we fill that so that would have given us toward 32.7 r by no means am i saying that i am a, a demi god that catches straight like trades like this no absolutely not i usually go for a, a bit less r but i do like trade setups like this i think that will conclude the video i hope i made clear when i trade certain pairs and when i do not so let me quickly summarize it for you guys if we had bad market conditions, I do not trade that pair. If we have consolidation, I do not trade that pair. If we have a falling knife, so really strong movement to the downside and I'm not in a position yet to the downside or the upside, of course, then I do not take trades. If we have no clear intent, so if I am unable to establish a proper bias, so meaning that all the confluences go to either the short or the long side, then I will not be taking trades and that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to join the free Discord server that we have. The link for it will be in the description. We also have an elite program if you guys are interested in that. I will also leave the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I would appreciate a comment and some love. Catch you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.